Hi, I'm Rick Kaufman, Technical Marketing Engineer for the Technical Enablement Team here at Aruba Networks. Now, this is Episode 9 of the Aruba Restful Automation Series, and we're starting the Adana business. Now, that last app that we did with the Jinja 2 examples, that's kind of your base um, application for what we're going to plan on doing with APIs. So we're going to get into the Swagger interface. We want to learn about APIs. We'll use a Swagger interface. Now, some APIs just don't have Swagger. Um, Aruba Central does. And we're going to log into Aruba Central and start kind of exploring around the Swagger interface. And I'm going to show you how to get it running so you can actually see some real information. Okay, so join me in this episode. We're going to take a deep dive into the Swagger interface in Aruba Central and learn a little bit more about APIs. Thank you for joining. This is the Aruba Restful Automation Series, Episode 9, Aruba Central Swagger. We're going to get a little swagger. And all it is is a graphical user interface to let us learn the APIs in Aruba Central. And we're going to see what kind of information we get back so we can write our scripts to handle that information accordingly. So here I want you to look at the bottom. There's this thing called organization. You're going to click on it. Then we're going to go and click on platform integration in the next page. Once we do that, we're going to zoom over here to REST APIs. We want to deal with the REST APIs. We'll click that. And here is the link to the Swagger interface. Don't click that yet because we're going to have to generate the token first. We're going to go over here and make sure system apps and tokens is highlighted in the middle. And we're going to click add apps and tokens. And we can give the app a name and click Generate. Once we do, we'll see in the middle of the screen, we have our app name. We have a client ID, a client secret, a redirect URI. But down at the bottom, we can download the token. Now, when we click on this, we're just going to get a little text file that pops up, some JSON, nothing scary, curly braces, square brackets. Remember that stuff. And we are just going to get the access token and copy that access token. Once we do, we can go back to this page, click on the Swagger interface URI, and then we'll get inside Swagger. So once we're in Swagger, we're going to take that token that we just copied, and we're going to paste it in access token and click the arrow. Once we do that, we'll authenticate ourselves to the Swagger interface and then we can pull down the selector wheel at the top and pick configuration because I'm going to go over here to groups. And in this particular API, get all groups. We're going to give an offset of zero and we're going to hit the try button because we can test drive the API. And when we do, what we're going to see is we're going to get some JSON back. And then we'll have to just deal with that. Um, by the looks of this, it looks like a Python dictionary. It starts with a curly brace, ends with a curly brace. And then inside, we have a key called data, which starts with a square bracket. That means it's a list of things. And when I start looking at the next character, it's a square bracket as well. So it's a list of the list. And we'll figure out how to deal with that in our Python script in the next episode. So Lab is pretty simple. We're going to have two containers again. We're going to flask one, Mongo in the other, and we're going to go talk to the Aruba Central API. So let's get started with the demo. First, we're going to sign in to commoncloudhp.com. So I will use my email, and we will look for the password, and we should be able to sign in. We are now in GreenLake Central, so we go to the left and we're going to launch Aruba Central. There we go. We are logged into Aruba Central. This is the home screen. Now, if this is a brand new account, there's not much in it. So we need to play with things that we can play with. So that's going to be groups for me. So let's go to organization. You'll probably have just the basic groups. You can always click on global and see the list of groups here as well. So I'm going to go under platform integration and I want to work with the REST API. And then I'll see the URL to the Swagger interface. But let's not click that just yet. 
Let's go to Systems, Apps, and Tokens, and go to Add Apps and Tokens, and I'm just going to use my email again for a name. Okay, and I'm just going to click Generate. When we do that, we get a token. You'll see that you have a client ID and a client secret. We're going to use those later when we get to our script. And we're also going to use this up here, the customer ID. But right now, we just have to download a token. So we're going to download token. And you get this text file that looks like this. And it has this access token in it. Go ahead and copy the token. Leave the quotes. So that's good. We'll grab that and say goodbye to that. And we'll make it a little easier on us to see this. So what we're going to do here is go back to APIs, click on the URL to the Swagger interface, and we have that token in our clipboard. Let's go ahead and add it right there and click this arrow. So with that, we should be able to drive the Swagger interface around. I'm going to go over here to Groups, Configuration, and I'm going to go to Get All Groups, and give it an index of zero. And let's test drive the API. And there's our 200, and we have our response body. I see I have a key called data, and it's got a square bracket, so that must be a list, a list of lists, as a matter of fact. And we'll figure out how to deal with that in the next episode. So that's great, we can get groups, but can we make a group or create a group here? Well, we need some JSON here for the group. If we just click up in this area up in here, the dark area, it'll transfer that JSON body down. And all we have to do, eh, let's leave central group. We'll just take what they have as the example. We'll go try it. And we'll let this turn. And we get a 201. So that means that it created it. So if we go back to get all groups, and try it again, we should see that we just received the central group inside our list of groups. Okay, that's the Swagger interface. So you might have to go watch that a couple of times, but you just have to copy that token and get it in the Swagger interface so you can get authenticated, then you can start test driving the APIs yourself and looking at what you'll get back, okay? We're going to jump in the next episode into creating a Python script and using this dictionary called Central Info to get us authenticated into Aruba Central. So stay curious, my friends. And as always, I want you to Google the error message. Now, like I was saying, in the next episode, we're going to put together a Python script and we're going to be able to go in and do the exact same things with groups that we just did with the Swagger interface. And we're going to leverage the PyCentral Python binding to do it. So developer arubanetworks.com, devhub arubanetworks.com, great resources. Keep the dream alive. By now, you should have a Aruba Central account. And as always, if you need any more additional training, for higher level stuff, go to these resources, great resources for learning more. Okay, thank you for joining this episode, and we look forward to seeing you in the next episode.